There we go. That video is working. Let's see if we can get the other video to work. And it's not working. Joy. And I even tested it and everything. Oh boy, I'm so sorry. Um, are okay. you trying to have a second screen? Are you trying to share your screen? Uh, well, I was trying to use a uh, a separate web camera so that I wouldn't have to use my laptop web camera. It makes it easier to braid in front of because then I can see as I'm positioning and I'm working. But if the separate web camera is not working, oh dear, I'll just make it work with uh, what I've got. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> Sorry about That's the tech right. issues. Why is that camera not working? <laughs> okay, that just worked a second ago. I'm gonna ask something very obvious, but you don't happen to have a lens cover over it, do you? No, it was, it literally was working just a moment ago. Uh, yeah, I like saw I, you. Yeah, when you saw me, that's the camera I've got it set to now again. Oh, dear. <laughs> um, I have no idea how to help you in this situation because I am not next to you with a camera. Yeah. I get work. I try to switch cameras to my other web camera and now it won't go back. All right, hold on. Let me see. If you take a look at the video, um, hold on. First, I'm going to stop recording uh, <laughs> or at least pause. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, sorry, folks, for the uh, technical difficulties. Um, my name is Naxos. Um, so today I'm going to be covering Japanese uh, finger looping. Um, uh, also known by its Japanese name is Kudauchi. Um, it dates back to about uh, the oldest physical evidence dates back to the sixth century. Um, so uh, if you're kind of wondering what, if you're not familiar with European finger looping, um, this method is most famous for uh, making all the lacing for the armor and weapons. Um, and it got more complicated and more ornate as as the uh, as time went on. So, um, does anybody does anybody have a question at the beginning that they'd like to ask? All right, I'm going to take that as a no. Um, I'm going to reach back here. Uh, so, for teaching and practicing, I like to use. Um, just a regular yarn. Let's see, check to make sure that's in the camera. Uh, so just regular old yarn. Um, I like to, the reason I like to use it is it's a little bit easier on the fingers. Um, you don't end up with as many calluses and, and cuts into your fingers as if you were using, uh, say embroidery thread or silk of a similar size as embroidery thread. Um, and it, the pattern builds a lot faster. Um, so because of the thicker yarn, it builds up a lot faster. So as you're practicing, you can immediately see results, um, which I find a lot helpful. Um, so you, it's easier to spot your mistakes if you're making a mistake. Um, it's easier to see when you're doing good things uh, too. Um, for practicing, uh, I like to practice the, the individual moves. I like to use uh, five loops um, of two colors. Um, they can be similar colors, although it makes it harder to see the pattern if the colors are too similar. So I like to use contrasting colors um, when I'm practicing uh, the different moves or if I'm trying to work out a pattern that I want to, to use, um, then I'll use uh, the colors to practice that. Um, 
So I guess we can get just started. Uh, the easiest way I find to measure out for loop braiding, uh, if you're practicing, um, is to use a body measurement. And I like to use fingertip to opposite shoulder. This way. So basically just pinch it in, pinch it out, and then reach across the opposite shoulder. And then fold it over. Put it in my beard so it shows up nice. And then for this, because uh, I'm doing five, what I'll do is I'll do three colors of my primary, or three loops of my primary color. And then I'll do use two loops of my secondary color. My yarn got tangled into my cords. Here we go. Now, when you're practicing, uh, the nice thing is that you don't need to cut each individual loop. So just fold it over. Pinch and fold. Now the idea is, is you want to try to make them as perfectly even as you can, uh, because there's no general, there is no good way to take up uh, slack. If there, if one loop is longer, significantly longer than another loop, there's no good way to take that slack up. Get some more yarn. So that's three loops for that. Put you in camera. And then my secondary color that I'm going to use is a silver. And the way you, you'll measure out the secondary color is just take your primary color line it up with your primary color and just measure it out from there. So I've got one loop and there's the second loop. That. And then the next step is to take this long string that you've got and you're just gonna make the two ends meet and you're gonna put a knot into the end of it. And what that does is it also helps to, uh, this way you don't have to be perfectly precise in your measurements because then you can kind of sort of take up that little bit of difference in, in your knot. So, so now I've got my two colors. So the next thing that you'll need is a leader cord. Uh, it's just a, a small cord or a thin rope. Uh, this is a 550 cord. Uh, you need about 28, 30 inches and then tie, it up, tie the ends together so that you have a loop. And what you're gonna do with this is you're gonna tie this around um, a table leg, a chair leg or chair uh, upright uh, doorknob, uh, something that you can make sure is pretty stationary and immobile. Um, and the easiest way to wrap that or to, to do that is I'm going to use my beater stick here as a, as a pole, is you're just going to wrap it around and take one end, put it through the other end and pull tight. Like that. And then the way you're going to secure your braid is what's called a uh, lark's head knot. And let's see. So take your loop end, your thumb and your forefinger go through the loop. And then you're going to rotate your hand down and sort of pinch your fingers together so that everything is captured in your fingers. And then you're going to take your other hand and sort of tease down 
that lot that loop a little bit so that you have a sliding sliding loop knot or not loop and then you will uh, take your knotted end that you just had put it through and then pull tight and be sure to pull both pieces um, so what you don't want happening is, is you end up with a little bit of uh, of your loop on the one side and then while you're setting up your braiding you're braiding and then all of a sudden it starts sliding on you and creating slack that you weren't expecting so make sure you pull both right there and then uh, what you'll do then is you're going to load up your fingers um, the simplest easiest pattern is to load um, all three colors on one hand uh, on your left hand and then your other primary colors, your other two loops, and put them onto your right hand. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and turn my camera around. Um, while I'm doing that, does anybody have any questions so far? So for this demonstration, I'm actually going to be using some bicolored loops uh, so that some of the moves are easier to see as I put my fingers through the loops. So as I was saying, uh, for practicing and, and you know, uh, practicing the moves or working out a new pattern, uh, three loops goes onto your left hand, and then two loops go onto your right hand, like so. And the first move I'm going to demonstrate is the open move. So if you're familiar with European loop braiding, this is going to be very familiar, uh, just a little backwards. So in Japanese loop braiding, your operator finger is your pinky or ring finger, whichever is open and you're most comfortable with. And so what we're going to do is we're going to run it through. Hold on, let me adjust that camera a little bit. And then you, what we're going to do is we're going to run our finger through the loop. So it's going to go um, in between. Now, what I've seen happen before is when I say go through the loop, is somebody will take this bottom shank and they'll pick it up and push that, that through on, to, uh, on top of it like that so that your loop is twisted. That's not what you want to do. Um, that's a completely different move set. Uh, so we're just going to go through the loop, through the loop until we reach the outermost loop. And for an open, we're going to grab, everybody see that? We're going to grab the bottom shank with our finger and we're going to pull it through and let it slide off your finger like that. Spread your hands as wide as you can get them. And what that does is that tensions that part of the loop in. And then we're going to walk the, the uh, loops up. So you're gonna put your now empty finger inside of the loop, let it slide off that finger. And then you're gonna take now that, now that empty one, put it inside the next one and walk it up and do that as many times as you got loops. Again, the open move is through, through, grab the bottom, let it slide off your finger and pull all the way through and spread your hands. Now, whether you, uh, as you get used to doing this, you, you can walk the loops while you spread your hands, save yourself a little bit of time right there. And again, at full speed, Does anybody have any questions so far? I know video is a little bit a little bit difficult for this setup because you don't really exactly get a chance to practice and have somebody walk you through something. All right. So I'm going to do open a couple of times. And when you do an open move repeatedly, what you end up getting are twin pigtails. 
is what they call it. So you're actually making two, two thin braids at the same time. That should be enough to show. And as you can see, I now have two braids. So the whatever your bottom shank color is, is one of the braids. And whatever your top shank color is, is the other braid. There we go. Can everybody see that okay? Now the next move is the closed move. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna impart a twist into the loop. So to do that, again, we're gonna go through the loops just like before. And this time, instead of grabbing the bottom shank, we're gonna grab the top shank. And it helps to kind of curl it around your finger a little bit like this and pull that through. Oops. I did not do it. Sorry. You got to grab it the, for a closed move. You got to grab it from the outside. So there we go. And so now you can see the, the bottom shank and the top shank have switched sides and switched colors. Again, through, through, grab the top shank from the outside. And do and so on. So again at speed. And we've now swapped all the loops. And if we keep doing this, so if you do a closed move over and over again, what you'll get is a square braid or square-ish. Do a few more just so you can see the pattern. All right. So in here you can see that we're starting to build a pattern. Uh, purple, silver, purple, silver. And it's forming here. You can see it where the two sides are starting to join. And so it will form a squarish braid. back up and then to form a flat braid we're going to use there's two methods there's the two-step and then there's a four-step so in the two-step it's pretty easy the right hand will go through the left grab it open and then the left hand will go through and grab it closed and you'll repeat that so one hand it will always be open and the other hand will always be closed
do a few more. Make sure we got the pattern. That should be good. And as you're braiding it, it's going to form a what looks like a square braid, but you'll need to sort of open it up. It'll open up on the back side. And that's what we will get. Uh, because of the the uh, loop dis color distribution, what I what are you, we're getting is, is a stripe of white with two lines of purple, the stripe of purple with two lines of white, and back again this other way. That's a little off camera. You you you're, you're oh, down. Sorry about that. Here we go. Thank you. So it'll open up. Now, unfortunately, one of the bad things about uh, loop braiding is, is that you're never going to get the kind of tension and uniformity that a kumihimo braid will give you, such as working on a maradai or a takadai. So... So that's one of the things that you have to just kind of be aware of and just don't get too frustrated when you're wondering why your braid isn't um, super tight uh, like you would find in other um, braid styles. Um, let's see. We've got a little bit of time. Uh, one of the, um, the, so those are your two basic moves. In finger loop braiding is that open and closed. Uh, there's a uh, uh, another move after that, an intermediate or an advanced move. Um, so, and what we're going to do here is it's called an over twist. Um, and so basically, what that is is you're going to perform two closed moves uh, in in a row on the same loop. So through, through, closed, walk the loops up, temporarily put it back on the original hand in an open finger, and then grab it again for another closed move. And now you've, you've linked it like you have before with a regular closed move. But if you're working a pattern with bicolored loops, then what this will allow you to do is link your, your braid together while maintaining a certain color order. All right. And so again, it's a closed move, walk your loops up so you free up that, that finger, put it back on there temporarily, and do another closed move. So, and then, so that's the easy way to do it. Um, hopefully, I can get this to show on camera. The other way, uh, it's a little bit faster once you get used to it, but it's kind of a little complicated. So, you would Go through just like before. I'm going to drop these temporarily to try to make this a little bit easier to see. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go take your operator finger and you're going to go all the way around and grab the bottom shank from from the opposite side of that you would normally do it. And you're going to pull and twist it through. And what that does is it gives it a that 360 degree twist all at once. Did that show up clearly? Uh, I mean, does that, does that make sense to people? I see a thumbs up. I hope that means okay. All right. So, uh, so through the loops like before, we're going to go all the way around the backside, grab that bottom shank, and pull it through. Now, if you were to do that over and over again, you're you're going to get a square braid. Um, but unless you're trying to work out a certain kind of color pattern 
um, it, most of the time that over twisting in finger looping isn't going to really play a, a, a role, but it's a, something to keep in mind for when you decide you want to move on to the hand looping. Uh, uh, the next advanced move is uh, an S and Z pickup. And so like I was demonstrating earlier, uh, the, the mistake that I've seen some people do is you want an S pickup, you're going to pick up the bottom shank, push down the top shank so that you put your finger in it inside, pick up, push down, and then grab it. If you're doing an open move, grab it for an open move, carefully pull through, and spread your hands. Again, an S pickup is pick up the bottom shank, push down that top shank, pick up, push down, grab it for an open move, pull through, and tension. And what this will do is you can combine this with some other moves to get what's called a Scott braid, a single over course twining uh, braid. Uh, so basically, whereas before, uh, and if you combine your open and close move into a flat braid, you'll get uh, mini chevrons. And what you can do with, with this S and Z pickup is you can create uh, big chevrons that will span um, the width of the braid. So you'll get like like braid size uh, chevrons. I wish I had one to show. I have lost mine. Um, so that's the S pickup. And a Z pickup is going to be similar. You're going to push down the top loop or the top shank and pick up the bottom one. Push down, pick up, grab it for your open move. Push down, pick up, push down, pick up, grab and pull through. Uh, you, I could just demonstrate the Scott braid right now. Why don't I do that? So let's see how this is going to work with bicolored loops. That, we'll do that. So pick up, push down, pick up, push down, grab for an open one. Pick up, push down, pick up, push down, grab for an open one. And then we're gonna do a regular open move. Oops. Yeah. Grab for an open move. Do the S pick up. S pick up. Regular open move. Regular open move. S pick up. S pick up. Regular open. Regular open. Pick up. Let's pick up. Regular open. Regular open. Let's see what we got here. Let's do that a few more times. Let's pick up. Let's pick up. Open. Open. Let's pick up. 
Let's pick up. Open. Open. Check our pattern. Made a mistake somewhere. So this is the first, I've never actually done this with a um, bicolor loop, so I'm not quite sure, I wasn't quite sure how this was gonna come out. And it looks like what I ended up doing was creating vertical stripes. So, um, and so that is the basics of, of Japanese finger loop braiding. Um, does anybody have any questions? It's gotta be a question out there somewhere. This feels weird. I, I assure you, at least I am paying attention. <laughs> I've just never taught this class without a question before. I've actually done a little bit of, of Kuduchi uh, years ago from a magazine article, actually. Ah, okay. And uh, and I and I since lost the article, <laughs> <laughs> so, and I hadn't bothered to try to look it up on on you know, online anywhere. But uh, I've I've been doing a lot of Kimhimo. Yeah. More, yeah. Much more recently. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, so now Kumihimo has a place in the SEA. Um, for Kumihimo, uh, oh, oh a, what you thought was a European? Okay. Um, so Kumihimo, the earliest that it can be dated is the early 1600s. Uh, uh, is is about the earliest we can date that, um, and that's through uh, examinations of of accent braids and seeing a uh, some of the braids have a stark uh, difference in in tightness of tension and an evenness of the t of that tension, um, and then the oldest written work demonstrating kumihimo uh, is to around seventeen hundred. Uh, give or take 50 years. The researchers aren't sure of the exact age. That's as close as they can date it. Um, which puts Kumihimo outside of the SCA uh, time frame. However, um, due to once you start a, a Kuda Uchi braid without some specialized equipment, um, you can't put it down. You're kind of tied to it. Um, and with Kumihimo, especially the Mardai and the foam Mardais, you can you can easily pause that, put it down, and come back to it later. Uh, as well as the fact that is that uh, uh, Mardais and and Tagadais create a uh, near perfect lookalike. Um, the basically it would take an expert um, in in both Kumihimo and Kudauchi be able to look at a braid and go, okay, this is this is this technique and this is that technique. Um, so, um, you know, feel free to keep playing with Kumihimo. So this is just, this is just, you know, one more braiding technique to, to be out there. I actually do Kumihimo a lot with, uh, with beads and the, for mundane stuff. Yep. Yep. Um, so Jennifer, to uh, the difference between European and uh, Japanese loop braiding. Now both techniques, you can do them with the palms facing or palms up, whichever you end up being more comfortable with. Um, so either either met, hand holding method will, will work, and then European. Um, will use the index finger as the operator and you'll go through the loops on the same hand and grab from the pinky. So you're building it from uh, the inside out and then Japanese 
your operator finger is your pinky and you're going through the loops of the opposite hand and grabbing that loop uh, from the index finger. And you're from there, that way you're building it from the outside in. Does that make sense? <laughs> All right, nice. Um, unfortunately, there are no, no, mm, no, let me think of a way to re rephrase that. Um, there's only one finger loop braiding pattern that exists, um, and it, it's more of a multi braider, like four to nine braiders, um, working in conjunction to make a twill weave braid um but other than that that's the only known uh finger looping pattern that's out there so as an individual braider there's no um they didn't think enough of the single braider single finger looping braiding to cr to write down the pattern for those uh so uh basically it, it's experiment 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 until you find what you want to find, or uh, you know, uh, let's see, we're coming up close to the end. Is one last call for questions? All right, I guess that will do. Um, so thank you all for for coming. Um, if you see me at an SE event, uh, feel free to you know, bend my ear and ask questions about Japanese loop braiding, uh, finger looping or hand looping. Uh, I'm always carrying yarn with me and scissors, uh, always ready to braid anywhere I go. So, um, all right, that's all I have. Um, before everybody leaves, I'm going to put um, some links in the chat. I'm going to link the handout again, but also I want you guys to know that you get rush credit when you take any of these classes. Um, you do not have to be a resident of Calentia or anything like that. So uh, please fill it out for Rush Credit and eventually you get a degree, which is super cool. And uh, teacher, you also get teaching credit. So you should fill one out too. I'm gonna link the instructor one in, in the chat as well. And then last but not least, I will put in the handout again for everybody. Also, I should probably stop recording, huh?